In this video, we'll walk through a few examples to understand how the five-year seasoning rule applies to Roth IRA withdrawals. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chris Dime. I'm a financial planner out of Edmonds, Washington, and I specialize in working with folks to and through retirement. In my last video, we touched on how the IRS codes the order of withdrawals from a Roth account, whether it's a Roth IRA, Roth 401k, etc. We didn't have time to get into some real world examples, so in today's video, we'll cover those examples so you can better understand how the real world application of withdrawing contributions, then conversions, then earnings may or may not impact you by way of income taxes and 10% early withdrawal penalty taxes. So let's jump in. Now, if you've gotten this far and you weren't aware that pulling money out of a Roth IRA could result in income taxes and or 10% early withdrawal penalties, I'd highly recommend you check out the previous video, which again, I'll link below, because it helps set the foundation for understanding how these examples work. And if you have a clear understanding of the rules, then these examples are gonna make a ton of sense. To keep our examples simple, we're gonna assume all Roth money is held inside of one Roth IRA. We're not gonna get into the specifics on how Roth 401ks can eventually get aggregated with Roth IRAs or how two different employer Roth 401ks can be aggregated for the purpose of satisfying some of these rules. We'll touch on some of those nuances in a future video. We're also not gonna to touch on inherited Roth IRAs and how those may or may not result in income taxes as well. The only nuance that I will clarify right now is that Roth IRAs are considered all pooled together for the purposes of account aggregation. If you're familiar with how a backdoor Roth IRA functions, whereby the IRS pools all of your traditional IRA money together, and it doesn't allow you to delineate between basis and gain for the purposes of a Roth conversion. You pretty much have to put it all together. In the same way, the IRS will view a Roth IRA as similarly all the money combined. So said another way, you can't have one Roth IRA be all of your contributions and one Roth IRA be all your conversions and then expect the IRS to prioritize one over the other. They put everything together as if it is one big Roth IRA. For a quick refresher on how Roth IRA withdrawal ordering works, any withdrawals are first gonna be considered contributions, then it's gonna be considered you pulling money out of conversions, then it's gonna be considered you pulling money out of the earnings. Contributions, those are the monetary deposits that you made throughout your career or your lifetime of owning this Roth IRA that were essentially from existing cash flow. This is your classic $6,000, $6,500, $7,000 Roth IRA contribution. Second are gonna be conversions, and this could be from a traditional 401k to a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, et cetera. But basically the amount of money that was converted and landed inside of a Roth IRA, that is going to be considered the conversion amount. And then earnings, that's everything else. So said another way, the total account balance minus conversions, minus contributions, that's considered the earnings. But in reality, the earnings are just the growth that has occurred since you made contributions and conversions to the account. As far as the tax consequences of a withdrawal, uh, step one, any contributions that you withdraw are considered income tax-free and penalty tax-free. So regardless of how old you are, how long you've had the account for, whatever, any money you put in, you can directly just take back out. Next up are conversions. The tax consequences to withdrawing a portion of conversions will never result in income taxes, but it may or may not result in a 10% early withdrawal penalty tax. Even if you're under 59 and a half, you can still avoid the 10% penalty tax on withdrawing the converted amount, but you have to wait five years since the year of conversion. And that's our first introduction to the five-year seasoning rule mentioned in the previous video. If you don't wait, five years or more since you made a Roth conversion, if your Roth IRA withdrawal is deemed to have part of it be considered a conversion, then you will owe a 10% penalty tax on the amount of money that was distributed and was considered a conversion because you didn't wait a full five years before withdrawing the converted amount. Now you can avoid this 10% penalty in a few ways. One, be older than 59 and a half. You could do a Roth conversion last year and withdraw all of it tomorrow as long as you're over 59 and a half. Or you may qualify for a special exemption to the 10% early withdrawal penalty if you meet one of the IRS's definitions, and I'll link that down below. And those are things like death, disability, 72T, or substantially equal periodic payment distributions from your Roth IRA. So if you meet one of those, then you can avoid the 10% penalty. But if you don't have any specific reason other than just lifestyle creep, then you'll pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty. Last up, tax consequences of earnings. The IRS says you'll owe income taxes on the amount of money you withdraw that's considered earnings, unless you satisfy two rules to make this distribution considered a qualified distribution. 
Number one, be older than 59 and a half. And number two, have that Roth IRA exist for longer than five years. Now, if you're older than 59 and a half, but you didn't meet that five year rule, then you will pay income taxes on the amount of money that was considered earnings from that Roth IRA withdrawal. On the other hand, if you waited five years since opening up the account, but you're under 59 and a half, you'll owe income taxes and a 10% penalty tax on the Roth IRA withdrawal that's considered earnings. Again, for a deeper dive, check out the previous video, but let's jump ahead with some examples. And for that, we'll head to the whiteboard. Okay, so let's cover a hypothetical example. Let's say you are 50 years old, and for the past 10 years, you've been making $5,000 contributions annually to your Roth IRA. That means you've put in a total of $50,000. Those are your contributions, okay? And let's say as of now, today, your Roth IRA is worth 100 grand. You did a great job investing, right? So now your Roth IRA, $100,000 in value, $50,000 of that you put in, $50,000 is earnings or gain. So 50,000 is considered your basis. If you said, hey, financial institution, I wanna liquidate my entire Roth IRA, here's how the IRS is going to prioritize and encode these distributions as far as taxes are concerned. So the first order of operation for a Roth IRA withdrawal is gonna first come from contributions. Now that's the 50 grand that you put in and those contributions are completely tax free. No income taxes, no penalty taxes. Even though you're under 59 and a half, this is money you already paid income taxes on and you contributed. It comes out completely tax free. And you could stop there, no harm, no foul, no taxes. But you said you want to liquidate the whole thing. So there's another $50,000 of gain uh, or earnings, you could call it. And those are going to come with both a 10% early withdrawal penalty tax because you're under 59 and a half. And you'll pull out whatever your income tax rate is which in this example, let's just assume you're at a 24% marginal income tax bracket. That means you get to pay the IRS 34% of 50 grand, which is 17,000 bucks. And you get a stroke a check to the IRS for 17,000. So originally you had hundred grand in a Roth IRA, and maybe you thought it was all tax free, but it's not. You liquidate the account, you pull 17 grand out for taxes, and that leaves you with a net of 83,000 bucks to your bank account. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, I had the Roth IRA open for five years. Doesn't that satisfy the five-year earnings test? And the answer is yes, but it's still not considered a qualifying distribution, meaning it's still not considered all of your earnings to be tax-free because there's two components of a qualifying distribution to get all your earnings out tax-free. Number one, you have to wait five years since the day you started the Roth IRA, which you have, but then you also have to be over 59 and a half, which you're not. So you get to pay earned income taxes and a 10% penalty tax on the gain slash earnings that you withdrew. All right, let's head to another example. Let's say similar situation. You're 50 years old. For the past 10 years, you've been making $5,000 a year contributions for 10 years into your Roth IRA for a total of 50,000. Okay. And then let's say in 2023, you did a $50,000 Roth conversion, okay? And then let's say you're looking at your account balance today and you wanna withdraw everything. And let's say your Roth IRA is worth $150,000. So very simple blocking here. Step one, 50,000 of the 150 are your contributions. 50,000 of the 150 is from a Roth conversion. And then by definition, the remaining 50,000 are from earnings or gain. Earnings, conversion, contributions. If you said, hey, investment custodian, I wanna withdraw everything from my account, the first 50,000 you withdraw is gonna be considered your contributions. And there's no tax on any of that. Even though you're under 59 and a half, there's no taxes. Next up are your conversion amounts, which if you were over 59 and a half, or you waited five years from this original Roth conversion in 2023, then this would also be no tax. But since you did the Roth conversion last year and you didn't wait five years for the Roth conversion to season, that means $50,000 is going to be assessed a early withdrawal penalty tax of 10%. Then lastly, the remaining 50,000 you withdrew did not meet the IRS's qualifying withdrawal rules, which require you to be 
over 59 and a half, which you're not, and they require the Roth IRA to be open for at least five years, which it was, it's been open for 10 years at least. However, since you didn't meet those two requirements, the entire distribution is going to be income taxable. And since you're under 59 and a half, you get to pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty tax. Assuming your marginal rate is 24%, you get to pay 34% on 50 grand, which is the same in our previous example, 17 grand in taxes. But on top of that now, you get to pay a 10% early withdrawal penalty on 50,000, which is 5,000 bucks in taxes. So for a total, you get to pay the IRS 22 grand in taxes. And that takes your account from 150,000 minus the 22,000 in taxes, you are left over with 128,000 bucks. So let's touch on a third example. Let's fast forward and say you are 68 years old now. You're no longer 50. And throughout your working career, you never had a Roth IRA up until about three years ago. So in 2021, you started your Roth IRA and you started it because your advisor said, hey, before you file for social security when you're 70, how about you do some Roth conversions while you're at arguably the lowest tax bracket you're probably gonna be for the rest of your life so that you pay as little in taxes as possible on money you move into a Roth account. And let's say your advisor recommended you start doing $50,000 Roth conversions over the past three years. So you did $50,000 in Roth conversions once in 2021, once in 2022, and then once in 2023. 50,000, 50,000, 50,000. Now, you're retired, you don't have any earned income, so you can't make contributions to your Roth IRA. You can only do conversions. And in this example, you did $150,000 worth of Roth conversions. $150,000 of Roth conversions. Okay. Let's say you wanna liquidate the entire account and today it's worth $200,000 in total. All right, so of the $200,000 of Roth IRA, 150,000 is from a Roth conversion or from subsequent Roth conversions, and $50,000 is gain or earnings. If you said you want to liquidate this whole account, here's how the IRS would treat things. First, they'd consider any withdrawals to be a return of contributions. Now, you didn't make any contributions. So for you, you don't qualify for any tax relief there. Next up are conversions. Now, remember the five-year rule says you have to wait five years after converting money for the entire withdrawal to not be subject to 10% early withdrawal penalty taxes, or you have to be older than 59 and a half. And you are. So since you're older than 59 and a half, you don't have to abide by any five-year seasoning rules for the purposes of Roth conversions to be considered tax-free. So this $150,000 comes out completely tax-free. Next up, the IRS will look at your earnings. And that's the third order of operation for a Roth IRA withdrawal. So they're gonna look at your earnings and say, okay, well, did you meet the definition of a qualified distribution so that your earnings are tax-free? Remember, step one, be older than 59 and a half. Step two, have your Roth IRA exist for longer than five years. So looking at your scenario, you're over 59 and a half, so you check that block. However, your Roth IRA has only been open for three years, four years if you include 2024, but you didn't meet the five-year holding period for having a Roth IRA in existence. Remember, you didn't have a Roth IRA throughout your career. The first time you ever had a Roth IRA was in 2021. So you did not meet this, which means your $50,000 of earnings when withdrawn will be considered income taxable to you. And if you're at that 24% bracket, you get to pay 24% in income taxes on this 50,000. You won't be assessed the 10% penalty that was assessed in the previous examples. And that's because you're over 59 and a half. So you won't owe that 10% penalty tax, but you will owe 24% on the $50,000 in earnings. So in this example, 150,000 will come out tax-free and then 50 grand will be assessed a $12,000 tax bill. So in this example, if we would have just waited five years from the original start date of owning this Roth IRA, and we were over the age of 59 and a half, all the earnings would have been completely tax-free. But since the Roth IRA in this example hasn't existed for five years or more, then you get to pay income taxes on the earnings that are part of the Roth IRA withdrawal. Remember, the Roth IRA order of operations for withdrawals are considered first to come from contributions, then conversions, then from earnings. And I would think of it just like Jenga. If you pull out a certain amount and that's considered non-taxable or tax-free or whatever, you can't put that money back in. 
aka if you take a Roth IRA withdrawal from your contributions, you can't put all your contributions back in. You have to make future annual successive contributions. Likewise with a Roth conversion, if you withdraw a portion and it's considered the Roth converted amount, you can't put that back in until you do a Roth conversion from another traditional retirement account source. So from a cost to action standpoint, if you don't have a Roth IRA set up now and you anticipate taking Roth IRA withdrawals in the future in retirement, it might make sense to start one soon and get that five-year clock ticking because once you've satisfied the five-year ticking clock for earnings, you're good to go. So even if you opened up a Roth IRA when you were 20, if you wait until 60 to actually start taking money out of that account, you've met that five-year period a long time ago. Fast forwarding though, if you're looking to make a Roth IRA withdrawal soon, I would just double check with your tax professional or your advisor who manages the IRA to confirm that any money you pull out of the account will be income tax and 10% penalty tax free. Keeping it simple, if you're over 59 and a half, any withdrawals won't have that 10% penalty, but you may or may not owe a income tax on the Roth IRA withdrawal, and that's based on the earnings. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have further questions, drop them in the comments below or get in touch on the website. We'll help you get squared away. Have an awesome rest of your week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.